good morning and welcome to Christ Church. I'm Terry White, your liturgist for this morning. Thank you for joining our worship service today. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Please join us and join in our call to worship this morning. Lord, teach us to pray so we might forgive those who have wronged us so we might lead free from pretense and hypocrisy, so we might trust your perfect plans and not replace them with our own, so we might love you with our whole hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves, so we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. And let us pray. Eternal God, companion of all who seek you, and seeker of all who turn away from you, draw near to us that we may draw near to you, and grant us the grace to love and to serve you that we may find in your will our true freedom, through Jesus Christ, the way and the truth and the life, and let us pray as we have been taught to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now lift your voices in praise to God with our hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's number 86 in our hymnal and words on your screen.
scripture readings this morning are from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, and we're continuing with our study of the Lord's Prayer. And the petition of the prayer that we're looking at today is, as we pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And from the Common English Bible, and even more lucid translation, forgive us for the ways we have wronged you, just as we also forgive those who have wronged us. And also from the Gospel of Luke, a story from the end of Jesus's life. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And the soldiers below drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing. The people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he really is the Christ sent from God, the Chosen One. And the soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you really are the King of the Jews, save yourself. Above his head they tacked a notice of the formal charge against him. It read, This is the King of the Jews. And one of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. May we be blessed in hearing and understanding God's holy word. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Jesus loves little children. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special children's time this morning. If your children are in the house, I encourage you to gather them around the screen this morning. And this time is for all of God's children. So I hope every one of you who are listening to this will come away with a blessing this morning. You know, I have a Band-Aid. What do you do with a Band-Aid? Well, I have to tell you a story about a mistake I did the other day. I was walking our dog late at night. It was dark outside and I made a really, uh, I made a really bad mistake. And that was instead of wearing my good tennis shoes, I wore flip-flops. And as I was walking up and down the street and I was about to come back to our house, I tripped on the pavement. And luckily I didn't fall on the pavement, but I fell just enough and caught myself with my with my other foot, but I scraped my big toe really badly and it was hurt and it was dirty and it was, it had blood on it. It was really bad, a, a really bad mistake I made. So what did I do? Well, I went home and cleaned up my toe and then I put the Band-Aid on my toe, right? Because a Band-Aid can cover up our mistakes. And you know how it works, right? You open the Band-Aid and then you always have these little flippy things that just flip up and you take those off. And then you take your Band-Aid and you just put it on your boo-boo. And I don't really have a boo-boo on my finger. It's on my toe. You put it on your boo-boo and it covers up that mistake. And that's what I did with my toe. I put a Band-Aid on the end of my toe to cover up that mistake that I made. But you know... Sometimes we make mistakes that hurt us. Sometimes we make mistakes that hurt others. And sometimes the worst mistakes we make hurt other people not on the outside, but hurt them on the inside. 
in their spirit, in their soul, in their heart. And when you hurt somebody like that, you're, what you need to do is you need to go to them and first of all, tell them you're sorry and apologize. I'm sorry I hurt you. I didn't mean to. I, I love you. And I never want to hurt you. I'm sorry I did. And then you have to ask for their forgiveness. Will you forgive me? And hopefully they will forgive you. You know, to forgive, that's a big word, forgiveness. To forgive means to let go of that hurt and not hold it against somebody and not hurt them back. That's what forgiveness means. And it's so important for all of us. That's the way God wants our world to work, that we forgive others when they hurt us and that others forgive us when we hurt them. That's the way God wants us to be. And it's so important that Jesus put it in His prayer. The prayer we say every Sunday. You remember the prayer. It starts off, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And then he said, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our debts. A debt in this in, in this moment, a debt means a mistake we made, something we did wrong. Forgive us for our mistakes and our wrongs as we forgive those, as we forgive our debtors, as we forgive those who have hurt us, those who have wronged us. It was so important to forgive that Jesus put it in his special prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgiveness covers up our mistakes. The mistakes don't go away, but it covers them. If we can offer forgiveness to others and if we can receive forgiveness, forgiveness when we've hurt somebody. So remember that this week, that when you've hurt someone, ask them to forgive you. And when someone hurts you and they ask for forgiveness, or even if they don't ask for forgiveness, you forgive them as well. Remember, that's the way God made us and wants us to be. Let's pray. Lord God, we, are, we thank you and praise you for building us up as human beings and making us wonderful and special in your sight. Help us to forgive others and help us to receive your forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. has never done what's wrong who among us has never needed forgiveness who among us has never made mistakes not one not one but Jesus says I will not condemn you your mistakes will lead to growth and change Jesus says my love will defend you and wipe away all your guilt and shame who among us has never done what's wrong who among us has never needed forgiveness among us has never made mistakes not one not one but spirit says God will not condemn you your mistakes will lead to growth and change spirit says God's love will defend you and wipe away your guilt and shame Spirit says 
God does not condemn us Our mistakes will lead to growth and change Spirit says God's love will defend us And wipe away all our guilt and shame I forgive you. Out of all the words that you can say in the entire English language, these three simple words could be the hardest to say. I forgive you. The struggle to forgive was exemplified in an extreme way during the sentencing of the terrorist and murderer Dylan Roof. Roof was the white supremacist who gunned down attendees at a Bible study at Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina five years ago. After he was convicted of 42 charges while he was being sentenced, families of the members that of those Ruth murdered offered him forgiveness, including Felicia Sanders. Mrs. Sanders was the mother of Taiwanza Sanders, one of the nine victims in the massacre. Mrs. Sanders was in the Bible study herself, and she only survived the shooting by lying down on the floor and pretending to be dead. This mother, who had lost her child in a most horrible way during a church service at the hands of a deranged young man, who even to this day has no remorse for what he did. This mother said the hardest words of all, I forgive you. I forgive you, she said. That's the easiest thing I had to do, she said. But you don't want to help somebody who don't want to help themselves. So may God have mercy on your soul. Forgiveness isn't easy, is it? Especially when it really matters. Take, for instance, the daughter of another one of the victims who had harsher words for Ruth. Grace and Doctor had a different message for the murderer of her mother. She said, You will rot in hell for where, where you belong. I hope your guilt eats you alive. And while you're pleading for life and begging for your life, I hope God forgives you. The one sin I'm not sure even God can forgive. This spawn of Satan, she said, will not steal our joy. Here's the crucial question about forgiveness. Why should we forgive? Why should we give, forgive the parent who beat us? or sexually abused us? Why should we forgive the drunk driver who struck our loved one and killed them? Why should we forgive the co-worker who stabbed us in the back? Why should we forgive the spouse who cheated on us? Why should we forgive the child who grew up and threw our values away? Particularly, why should we forgive if they're not even remorseful or sorry about what they did. If there's no repentance, no restitution, it isn't right. Forgiveness is an offense to our universal instinct for fair play. I read about Jesus. I've studied Jesus. I've meditated on Jesus dying on the cross in this most excruciating way. You know, death by crucifixion comes about by asphyxiation. You literally are hanging on the cross in a way that makes it hard to breathe. You can't breathe. And you end up suffocating to death. And there's Jesus on the cross. Imagine, imagine the scene that's playing out below him as he hangs barely able to breathe. The soldiers, without a care in the world, 
They're rolling dice to figure out who gets to keep his clothes. They're playing games with his only worldly possessions. The leaders of his own faith standing under the cross, watching one of their own die at the hands of the occupying Roman state, not in solidarity with a fellow Jew, but mocking him and making fun of him. And see his own people mock him. And when the soldiers saw those mocking him, they joined in fun and made fun of him as well and served him sour wine as a joke to quench his thirst as he died. And in, a, and in an act with dripping and brutal sarcasm, they tack a sign above his head that says, King of the Jews. And they say, save yourself if you are who you say you are. And given all that, all the mocking and the apathy and the lack of care, all of that, the ridicule, and even his own inability to take a breath, take a deep breath and keep himself alive, Jesus somehow finds, even without breath, he finds the power to speak. And what does he say? What does he say in his dying breaths? You know the words, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Who is it in your own life that you're having trouble forgiving? The anger and the hurt that you're holding on to that's dragging you down every day, holding you back from fully embracing the life before you. Hey, don't think just because I'm a minister, I can't hold a grudge myself. I know, I know deep in my heart the handful of people I never want to be in a room with again. Forgiveness is something we all struggle with, especially when it matters the most. Maybe that's why after Jesus taught his disciples that wonderful prayer, his prayer that we, re, that we pray every Sunday, of all the things mentioned in that prayer, like the daily bread and the temptation and the thy kingdom come, maybe after all of that, when Jesus finished teaching in that prayer, he felt the urgent need to come back to one point in the prayer, to circle back to drive home the point of forgiveness and to emphasize for them the importance of forgiving. And he says, for if you give up, forgive others their wrongdoings, then your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive what you've done. Forgiveness is difficult. Forgiveness is difficult, but it is possible. I think back to a church member of a church in Owensboro. She came to me with a horrendous story of a father who repeatedly abused her sexually for many years of her childhood, and a mother who allowed the abuse to go on and on and on for years. She left home as a young teenager to couch surf at friends' houses Eventually, when she became an adult, she left her hometown and she never looked back. She never once went back to visit her family or even her friends in her hometown. But in her mid-40s, she got word that her father had died and notice of his death brought her face to face once again with the horror of his abuse that she thought she had safely locked away so many years ago. What she began to realize was that her life, her addictions, her inability to form lasting relationships, or even to hold down a job for any amount of time, all of that, all of that stemmed back to her fear, her inability to feel safe, 
to feel love, to feel any sense of being a worthy human being. And among all the issues, and there were many that she needed to resolve, she also felt strongly that she needed to release her anger for her father and mother. It was a long, long process. It involved her seeking out professional counseling. And as far as the church goes, we pulled out all the stops in terms of what faith can offer. Prayers surrounding her and solid relationships. We formed a group of women around her who met with her and prayed with her and surrounded this member with unconditional love a sermon series on prayer and a book study, a Bible study on prayer. And a, and at the end, a sort of a, a burial service where we literally buried symbols of her suffering. I'm happy to say that this spiritual journey led her to a sense of release and a sense of relief of that tragic burden. And for her, the chains were broken in the, in the context of forgiveness. And that's why I believe even though it's not easy, forgiveness is possible. Back to Charleston, another woman, Bethane Middleton Brown. Bethane was the sister of Reverend DePayne Middleton Doctor, who was another victim in the Charleston shooting and who was the pastor of Emmanuel AME Church. And this sister said to his murderer during the sentencing, I wanted to hate you, but my faith tells me no. I wanted to remain angry and bitter, but my view of life won't let me. And she said this to a man who, to this very day, still believes that his victim, his victims, and all people of color are nothing but animals. To be honest, I have no idea how she could forgive, except for her faith in Jesus Christ. But she's right. Our Christian faith says we must forgive. It's the only way forward. And Jesus says that our forgiving others is directly related to our relationship with God. It's part of being a Christian and part of being the church. And so my prayer for me and for all of us is that God help us all with the struggle to forgive. May we forgive others as God forgives us. Let us pray. Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us, Lord, to pray. But you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls and bid resentment cease. Then bound to all in loves of peace, our lives will spread your peace. Amen.
As we come to a time of prayer, I remind you of our prayer concern time following our worship service on Zoom. I hope you'll join us there. Lift up your concerns and hear the concerns of others. And now as we begin our prayer, let's take a couple of deep cleansing breaths to begin our own meditation to remind us that God's presence is with us even now. Let us pray. Holy Presence, God in community, creative spirit. You have been our shelter and our shield from one generation to another. You have been our overarching sky, our shading tree, our deepest waters, our pulsing veins. You have spread your vine widely among your people bringing us to a bounteous fruitfulness of care and nurture for each other, of fulfillment and peace for all your children. And so we ask, we pray, that you would grow within us still, that we may more deeply root ourselves in your visions of mercy, kindness, love, and justice. Open our arms and open our hearts that we might lift one another's burdens with joy. Speak through our own mouths that we might comfort those who have been afflicted. Urge our feet along the road that we might march in solidarity with the wounded. Teach us to be the household of God Lead us to be your hands and feet, the body of Christ in your world that needs you so desperately. Make us a people spreading out the everlasting branches of your love from our own hearts to the hearts who need you. In Christ's name we pray, and in the power of your Spirit we place our deepest hopes. And all of God's people said, Amen. In response to God's still speaking word, let us affirm our faith with the words of Paul from Ephesians chapter 4. There is one hope, one calling to which we are called. The hope, the in, hope our in our lives is Jesus. Jesus. The call, the we, call we must answer, answer is God's. God. There is one faith, one hope, one Lord of us all. The Lord, the Lord of our, our lives is Jesus. Jesus. There is one baptism, one Father, one Mother of us all. The Creator who calls us as God. His God. We are one body, one family, and one church. Woven, woven by, by the Spirit, spirit bonds, bonds, of of peace. bonds of peace. With Christ's children throughout all of this earth. We, we are, are one, one body, body in unity, 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 unity and, love. and love. Amen. Go out into the world in peace and hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering. Honor every person you meet and honor every piece of God's abundant creation. And now may the gracious God of our Lord Jesus Christ go with us all to guide us with the light of the gospel and to gather us into Christ's righteous and beloved community today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.